Hello everyone, welcome to the class of Econometrics 2, Econ 333. And uh, today we are going to study vector autoregressive model and Granger causality test in EVUs. We are going to estimate a vector autoregressive model in EVUs. And I have this data in Excel. Uh, I have three variables. The first one, IP. Uh, which represents industrial production then we have m1 money supply and tb3 the treasury bills of three months it is basically the interest rate of treasury bills uh, that is given to us and this is a monthly data uh, from 1959 up to 1995 and uh, monthly data means we have 12 uh, months in a year so we have um, 12 multiplied by uh, the number of years that we have. So we will get somewhat 435 year data. It is up to the third month of 1995. So we have a total of uh, 435 observations, whereas uh, in the top uh, row, we have the headings for this data. I'm going to run vector autoregressive model. So for that purpose, I have to transfer this data into eViews. And uh, I have to create a work file for it. I have opened eViews here. And in order to create a work file, I type wf create work file, create, and give it a name. Let's say uh, I give it a name var. Um, you can give any name to it that depends on your research so when I press enter I have this uh, screen this window that appears work file create window the first option is about the type of data that we have if it is unstructured and dated we select the first one uh, usually for cross-sectional data but if you have time series data, then dated regular frequency. And if you have panel data, then the third option. A vector autoregressive model are time series models, so dated regular frequency. Then what is the frequency? It is a monthly data, so I choose monthly. And what is the start date? It is uh, 1959. Uh, let's go back to the Excel sheet. You see, it starts from the first month of 1959 and it uh, it is up to March 1995. So start date, I put it 1959 and M1 means first month up to 1995, third month of uh, 1995 you can give it a name i've already given it but uh, it hasn't taken so i give it a name uh, var and press ok so this is the new window that i have uh, uh, formed over here this is t4 constant and it will capture the residual element now we need to transfer the data and uh, the data is uh, let create that data first data first variable was ip the second variable was uh, m1 and the third variable is tb3 so we have to keep the same order if we change the order, then we will not be able to copy paste the data properly. So this uh, second variable is M1 and the third variable is TB3. Now remember, you can uh, give it any name that you can remember easily. You can change the name here, but you cannot change the sequence if you are going to copy the data. I press enter and uh, here is the data NA not applicable because we haven't transferred the data yet. We have just created the variables IP, M1 and TB3. Starting from 1959, first month, then second month, third month and uh, the data 
continue continues up to 1995 third month okay so now we need to transfer the data from the excel sheet so i have opened the excel sheet and uh, i have selected the uh, i have kept the columns where i have the label and directly selected the data and control shift right arrow and then down arrow so this will select the entire data then pressing control c to copy this data going back to eviews and clicking on the first cell of the data and then press control v to paste the data and uh, i just want to see if everything is okay apparently the data seems to have been copied successfully then press edit and this saves the data now i have saved the data i can safely close this window delete and title group uh, yes it doesn't matter i have the data i can open it this is ip i have the data of ip individually then i have the data of m1 and i have the data of treasury bills next what i can do is uh, i want to check the linear relationship uh, it is better to check data graphically first if uh, it has anything new or it may give you some ideas uh, first and so i want a line graph so i write line and i want a line graph for ip m1 and tv3 when i press enter i get a general graph you can see that the red line is for m1 money supply is increasing over time so definitely the first impression that i get from this data is it must uh, have a unit root you see it has no uh, constant mean so it definitely has some unit root similarly uh, for the uh, ip and tv3 as well so i can uh, check them separately to be sure but anyhow there is unit root in uh, the data uh, line ip you see it is it has an upward trend it has no constant mean uh, uh, no evidence of mean reversion over here and uh, again i want a graph for tv3 because that wasn't clear from the first graph so this is tv3 let us estimate the vector auto regression model first without resolving for the unit root uh, I choose these three variables IP, M1 and TV3. Then I click the right button on the mouse and open as var. When I click the button, I get this window where I have to choose uh, var type and uh, the standard var model uh, that is pre-selected. I leave it on the standard war model then these are the endogenous variable if I have missed an endogenous variable I can write it here or I can remove any variable that I do not need uh, but fortunately these three variables uh, I want to run the vector auto regression for them then the lag interval uh, it has taken uh, the lag interval from 1 to 2 so it means we have two lags and this model but if you want to increase the lag we can increase it um, let's say i want to have lag uh, for these variable from one to four so i've uh, ret uh, i've changed it to four then endogenous variable exogenous variable is c the constant and estimated sample estimation sample i leave it as it is uh, if I intend for certain sample then I can change it over here when I press ok I get 
the initial results for the vector autoregressive model. Here we have uh, IP, M1, and TB3 as dependent variable. And all these on uh, this side, on, on this column, these are the independent variable for our model. So IP depends, uh, IP depends on its own lag values. Uh, let me resize the screen a bit for more visibility. IP depends on its own lag value and we have taken four legs. Then it depends on M1 again four legs and then it depends on TB3 with four legs and then we have constant. So this is basically a one equation and we have second equation for M1 and third equation for TB3. Now let us look at uh, the coefficient IP and IP minus one means its first leg. That relationship is uh, significant uh, because uh, this shows a t, uh, t statistic and t statistic for 5% significance level is 1.96 so the general rule of thumb is that if it is greater than 2 then we say that uh, the coefficient is significant and uh, the value is 1.25 now we may also check uh, this is a, a, a test of unit root as well. If it is equal to or greater than 1, then we know, uh, know for sure that there is a unit root in this model because IP is uh, directly related to its uh, lag and its value is 1.25. We can uh, say that IP has unit root. Look at M1, M1 and its immediate lag is M1 minus 1. That is 1.36 again with significant t statistic. So de definitely there is a unit root as well. Let us look for TB3 and its uh, immediate lag value that is 1.29. And again there is a unit root. So in order to treat for the unit root, what we need to do is take difference of uh, these variables or we, we may take log in certain cases. Let us estimate them with difference. So I select these variable. I write D bracket and then the variable IP. This basically takes the difference of these variables. Difference of IP difference of m1 and then difference of tb3 and i press ok now look at those variables the same uh, relationships difference of ip in relationship with difference of ip uh, uh, its first leg that is significant greater than uh, 2 and it has a value of 0.2 cent. So means it is related to its leg length, but now there is no unit root. Similarly, look at uh, d m1 m minus uh, one, that is 0.39 and still significant. And also uh, we can observe d t v3 minus one, that is 0.3 and significant so there is no unit rule let us talk a bit about the coefficients of this war model uh, we have this dp uh, change in ip and uh, it is significantly related to its own leg value it is also it is not significantly related to its second leg length and again uh, the t, statistic, t statistics is less than 2, so it is not sig uh, significantly related to its third leg value and even not to its fourth leg value. Um, if you look at the M1, again, 
uh, that is not significantly related to any of its land and uh, the treasury bill it is significantly related to IP uh, first leg of the IP then again to the second leg of IP but not related to the third leg length of IP and again not related to the fourth leg length then we can also see the other variables we have a, a lot of coefficients that we have uh, derived over here so we can check in similar fashion for each one of them and all we have to do is to look at the t statistic here for example uh, it is significant uh, d this is the change in money supply uh, uh, with three lags minus uh, with the leg as t minus three so m1 is related to uh, its third leg but it is not related to its first leg and its second leg why is this so usually we have a quarterly uh, change in policy maybe because of that or maybe because of any other reason similarly you can see it is related to its treasury bill negatively related to changes in the treasury bill in its uh, first leg so all uh, of these coefficients can be uh, interpreted in this manner but the interesting question is uh, how should we decide the lag length i have taken it uh, randomly i've said that let me take it uh, with four legs but what is the criteria what is the rule so for that purpose what we need to do is uh, go to the option view and uh, we have this leg structure and leg length criteria and how many legs should we include uh, since this is a monthly data we should include 12 legs if it was uh, quarterly data then we should have included four legs and normally for early data we uh, usually include two uh, two legs and uh, i've taken 12 legs here i pressed ok and here is the test there are uh, six type of tests and these tests name are given over here what common researchers do is uh, they usually use the acidic uh, information criteria some of the researchers also use the short information criteria but basically uh, these tests are somewhat identical uh, the result is definitely different but these tests by nature are identical and we have the final production error which use different methodology and uh, again the LR test use different methodology as a normal practice as normal researcher they prefer uh, the ACIC info criteria and according to that the good lag length for our model is uh, 7 point uh, for, uh, that is uh, 9 um, so we take the leg length of 9 for our vector auto regressive model so again I go to the window estimate and change the leg intervals from 1 to 9 and press ok so this is my vector auto regressive model with 9 leg lengths for uh, each and every variable so this is now quite an extensive uh, you can say model but definitely you see here at uh, leg length of 8 we have a significant variable similarly at uh, 9 we have also significant variable where treasury bill is uh, dependent on the IP uh, with its ninth leg length. We also need to conduct certain tests over here. So the first test is uh, for autocorrelation. Um, we click views residual test and 
um, choose the autocorrelation test portmanteau autocorrelation test and then specify the legs again I uh, enter legs 12 legs over here and press OK uh, you will see that you will not get any result for the leg length selected for the vector auto regressive model it will only be valid for legs larger than the war leg order so we have chosen 12 leg orders whereas our vector auto uh, regression model is of nine legs it will skip those nine legs and will give us the result for the remaining three legs now over here uh, our null hypothesis is no residual autocorrelation up to leg h and uh, if our probability for uh, this is greater than 0 0.05 means more than 5 percent then we can say that there is no autocorrelation but in this case the probability is less than uh, 0 0.05 it means that the model contains autocorrelation it has serial autocorrelation so we have to uh, correct uh, the autocorrelation first also uh, we can test this uh, with another residual test the autocorrelation lm test and uh, i need 12 legs for that as well and uh, this is the autocorrelation lm test we get two types of test over here the first test is for uh, up to leg h and uh, this test is for individual leg lengths the first leg length uh, we have probability of uh, 0.004 that is less than 0 0.05 means that we have a serial autocorrelation at first leg but we do not have the uh, serial autocorrelation at second leg uh, then we have autocorrelation at third fourth leg and uh, we do not have autocorrelation at fifth leg then no autocorrelation at 6 then 7th um, basically um, we uh, can conclude that the model has autocorrelation the second test uh, is slightly different uh, it is somewhat cumulative uh, the first one is for uh, autocorrelation of leg uh, length 1 then the second is autocorrelation for leg length 1 and 2 and then the third one it is for leg length 1 2 and 3 so you basically see that all the leg lengths uh, that we are choosing here has autocorrelation why because uh, the first one the first uh, leg length has autocorrelation that is tr uh, translating uh, into all these uh, probability values so uh, in order to go for uh, this model we need to correct the autocorrelation and that is a topic uh, for another lecture uh, how to uh, correct autocorrelation in data anyhow we can identify autocorrelation or uh, in the vector autoregressive model by using these two techniques then uh, we are interested in the uh, causality test as well and uh, again i go to view residual test and uh, i have the uh, causality test uh, where is the causality test it is in the leg structure granger causality and block exogeneity test and this is the result uh, of the granger causality test now we have dependent variable DIP change in industrial production and the independent variable DM1 and DB3. Then in the second model we have M1 as the dependent and the remaining two variable as independent. Then again TB3 is a dependent variable in the third and the remaining two are the uh, independent variable for the third equation now the null hypothesis here is that these variable granger cause the dependent variable in our first scenario uh, change in m1 
Granger causes uh, IP and uh, DB3 Granger causes IP. So the probability for that is 0.46 that is greater than 0 0.05. So we can say that DM1 Granger causes the IP and similarly TB3 Granger causes uh, IP. And uh, these two variables overall also causes uh, the IP. Again, for the second uh, model that we have, M1 uh, is dependent variable, IP and TB3 are independent. So, IP causes uh, M1, um, but TB3 does not Granger cause M1 because of its low probability. And therefore, the overall uh, Granger causality for these two variables uh, is also uh, you can say that um, overall these two variables do not cause uh, Granger cause M1. And uh, the same is true for uh, the TB3. Both these variables do not cause uh, TB3. And uh, the overall is result also supports it. These two variables does not cause uh, TB3. One final step in our uh, vector autoregressive model is the impulse response function. So how we do that, uh, click view and uh, choose impulse response. This is our, uh, these are our variables for uh, impulse response function. Now it is important to note that uh, the order does matter. Uh, because if we choose the Holesky DOF adjusted measure, the decomposition method or is Holesky, then what will happen? Uh, let me show you the impact of uh, the order in this scenario. If I press OK, I have uh, this impulse response function for all the three variables. But the Holesky method forces the remaining two variables to start from zero all of uh, these variables they it forces them to start from zero let us interpret it how we interpret the um, imp impulse response function basically in the first graph that is response of dip to dip means the response of industrial production to its lag values and that is uh, high enough that is more than 0.6 for its first leg and for subsequent legs this impact reduces then again looking to the middle graph that is the response of dm1 to dm1 means uh, m1 to its own leg values that is positive and uh, up to somewhat three legs and then uh, it uh, has a different pattern and similarly for the TB3 it is effective up to three legs and uh, then it changes for the other there are slightly positive responses at uh, later legs so uh, here for TB3 and TIP, when there are changes in industrial production, we see that uh, 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 the TB3 responses, the treasury build rates responses to its first, second and third leg. This is how we usually interpret the impulse response function uh, graph. So that is uh, the end of vector autoregression on eWeaves. If you have any questions, please do uh, ask in the comment section. Thank you very much.